Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Yeah, Friday. What's up, everybody? Friday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope you all had an amazing day yesterday as we saw some market movements. We're up about nine points this morning in the S&P, 25 points this morning in the NASDAQ as we are about 20 minutes before 6 o'clock in Central Time. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. If you are uh, a returning uh, subscriber, do me a favor, hit the like, hit that little thumbs up. It helps, uh, it helps a tremendous amount. Go ahead, do it real quick. Just push it. It won't hurt. All right, good, thanks. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So S&P this morning, we're up nine now. We are right smack against all-time highs again, uh, and we're sitting right below a 15-minute area of supply. Now, yesterday we had um, a 60-minute level that uh, that we saw a little bit of a sell-off from, but then it just kind of chopped around through that area. Two areas I'd look for a potential reversal we've not quite gotten back to as of yet. So uh, now we're coming up against that 15-minute level. This was a great level, and we sold away from it. Um, but now we've just kind of been basing in front of it. If I go to a 15-minute chart, remember our six-candle rule. One, two, three, four, five. After six candles, it had gone nowhere. Uh, and so we're really not uh, – it doesn't really give us the right setup for the, for the next true entry. So with that being said – um, we are looking at on a four hour time period, we're coming right up against that all time high. Um, not quite there yet, all time high of 3029. We're about seven points away uh, from, from retracing and getting back into that all time high as we're seeing some more strength coming into this market. Um, once we're at an all time high, my, most of you that have, have watched for a while know I've got a pretty simple rule. You don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't pee into the wind, and you don't short the all time high. It doesn't do any good for us to try to short when there's nothing to lean up against over here. So we could see a bit of a breakout. Now, if we get a bit of a breakout above this 3022 area, since now we're kind of hanging around below it, we do have to remember that there is still a bit of supply up above us, right? So room to roam might get a little bit choppy with this little area here and this little area here. And then also be aware that sometimes we, we wind up with our Friday afternoon sell-off. So Yes, there's a chance for a breakout, um, but keep your breakout stop tight, right? Right now, it would be under here. So keep your breakout stops very tight if you do take the breakout, just simply because of the Friday afternoon sell-off that has occurred um, recently. You know, it's just profit-taking, right? This is a great week for a profit-taking at the end of the week to just pick something up um, and then uh, and then just allow yourself to wait for a pullback if, if that is indeed the case. Um Looking at the NASDAQ, we get very similar price actions, although it's not back up to the to the uh, area of supply here up above. The NASDAQ yesterday uh, sold off a little bit more. Um, we had our uh, we've we've got our next level here up above uh, at a, around eight thousand. When I go to the four hour chart, we'll see that that puts us just below the all time high of eighty fifty one. So the NASDAQ's a little bit further off the all time high. Than the S and P is uh, still necessarily wouldn't want to short the Nasdaq either. Uh, although if the Nasdaq does indeed come back up into this area, I think this one's a better probability for shorting than the S and P would have any of them. Uh, crude oil. So yesterday in crude, we had uh, price came down to a little bitty level, rallied up, came back in again. We got a nice little move away. So crude did give us a little bit of a move away from our, our level yesterday. I need to remove that area, and we have another level down below where we may see price reverse. Uh, we also still have a little bit of a supply area up here where we may see price reverse. So we're still high, kind of in between those two. Gold yesterday, we came back to our our uh, confirmation, or excuse me, our, the, the origin of our speed candle move up after uh, the uh, af after the morning moves. And we got a little bit of a move away on a small time frame. It's a lot easier to see. We hit it, gave it a real quick touch and go, and it came right to the opposing fair price value area uh, for a nice little run. So if you're able to catch that one yesterday from the live trading room, then that was uh, hopefully was a pretty good little move for you. Uh, now, looking at the one-hour time period, 
you know, on, on what our next opportunity is. I might come all the way down into this region and just keep an eye on this area here. Now, I don't love the fact that we based in front of it, so just keep that, be aware of that. Um, and time of day here is not exceptional. Actually, you know what? With the basing in front of the, and the poor time of day, I'm actually going to change my mind on that. Um, poor time of day really is important, and I need to be aware of that. And so that's something for everybody to, to keep in mind is the time of day that a level is created. Uh, I will wrap some lines around here as this was a decent time of the day, specifically for gold. Um, this is not always a great time of day in the equity markets. But in the gold markets, I see that this works pretty effectively. Uh, next, we have our bond and then all of our currency markets. Now, all of our currency markets have the uh, the gap that is showing. So let me just pull up, for example, euro. Uh, so in euro, we've got the 6E. Well, that's because we rolled over to the December contract. So if I switch to the 6EZ19, um, you will not see that gap, right? So whenever we have that gap, it's because of the way uh, that uh, that that this particular broker links together the contracts. We went from the U contract to the Z contract. So you won't see a gap um, on any of these uh, if you look at the actual contract specific, but what gap you're seeing is that rollover gap, right? So that rollover gap really, you know, changes the, the dynamic a bit only because what I have found is that those rollover gaps that, that happen in the currencies are still ga valid gaps and oftentimes can be played as gaps. So I need to keep that in mind, uh, specifically in the currencies. And I, I'm not sure really, frankly, what the difference is and why the rollover gaps uh, you know, get played as gaps in the currency markets, but they do. Uh, and so with that knowledge, I'm going to start looking at some of these gap areas for potential. Now, unfortunately, we uh, gapped up and ran through this one. Um, but certainly your order would have been on the uh, on the uh, on the U contract anyway on that one. So after we gapped up, so now what I want to look at in this case is this one as well from a gap fill perspective. Now once again, uh, um, these these gaps they're they're not true gaps. Like I said, they're not going to show up on the on the uh, continuous contract or the the one that. You know where, where your broker stitches them together in order to eliminate rollover gaps. Um, but I have found specifically with this broker, since I do be able to see the gaps, that it actually has helped my trading uh, to to use those gaps when they do when they do come into play. Uh, in the Canadian dollar yesterday, we got stopped out on what was a pretty decent level right here. Uh, came back down, gave us another touch into it, moved away, gapped up right close to to that same level again. Uh, and now we have uh, we've moved back down into what essentially would be the gap fill area. So let's see where we go from here. If I look at this on a four hour time period, I, I look to see that I'm putting in a bit of a lower high and a lower low. I'd like to see if price can make it all the way down to here. So there could be a potential for a breakdown in this one with price running down into here. If I look at the hourly chart, you can see, OK, maybe we are setting up for a bit of a breakdown below here, uh, below this region and in this range. Great British Pound and Japanese Yen. Looking at those two as we wrap up for the day. Um, Great British Pound, huge rally up in the pound. Um, certainly not just from the gap, but just in price movement in general. We've now put in what could be a you know, a nice reversal candlestick up here. So if you want to go candle to candle, I think it actually makes sense to look candle to candle right here from this big move higher. Uh, I like this area down here because I always like the origin of big moves up uh, for potential reversals. Uh, we may also get a little bit of an opportunity in here uh, on that 15 minute level right in there. So depending on your on your style and what you like, I think if you go a little further out on the on the supply demand curve, you're probably a little bit better off, but that one would be the better trade. And then in uh, and then in the Japanese yen, this is the level I looked that we looked at yesterday for a uh, for a potential reversal is price somewhere coming up into here giving us a bit of a reversal. So let's just keep an eye on what does the, the movement look like when we get back to here. So heading into the weekend, uh, we have 
remember that we're coming close to that all-time high. Be aware of afternoon sell-offs and look for those speed candles. Finding those speed candles are, when, are what's going to give us our highest probability entries. But if you have any questions, please send us an email. Support at TradersArmy.com. Until, until tomorrow, everybody. See you soon. Bye.